the rate of inflation might be correlated to uh, the number of people in poverty. What do you think? So what does that mean? That means, is there a relationship between those two variables? What do you think? Hell yeah, right? If inflation goes up pretty quickly, the number of people in poverty should probably go up too. Not like perfectly, but like this will go like that, this will go... <laughs> Right, because some people are right on the edge. If inflation goes up, then they're in. They're in there. Okay, I love it. All right. Uh, do you guys believe it's true that um, uh, increases in teachers or like level of teacher salary is correlated with liquor sales? What do you guys think? I love you guys. They are. <laughs> They are. The more you pay teachers, the more there are liquor sales. But, but think about it for a minute. Does that mean that all teachers are drunks? No. If teacher salaries are going up, do you think it's only teacher salaries that are going up? Don't you think maybe it's, it's a broader section? So if everybody's pay went up a little bit, I expect sales of just about everything to go up a little bit, right? You guys follow what I'm saying? Do you think heights heights of uh just people's heights are correlated with whether or not they play basketball think about it is there a relationship between the height of a person or the, the, the a person playing basketball and their height yes there is right does that mean that um playing basketball makes you taller if I went around and analyzed people playing basketball, and I'm like, oh my God, all these people are tall as shit, I might come away thinking, yeah, playing basketball makes you taller. But of course, that's silly, correct? What's the actual causation there? Why would, and I'm not saying, by the way, trust me, back in the day, Spud, Spud Webb and, and Muggsy Bogues, they gave me hope, 5'3", five, 5'7". Five, but your average basketball player are they relatively tall? Yes. So is it correct to say then that playing basketball makes you tall? Is that correct to say? No. What's the correct thing to get from that? What do we know is more likely true? Why? Again, it, it makes, that makes it sound like playing basketball makes you tall. Okay. What does it take to be competitive in basketball? To a certain degree, in general. Height, right? Uh, there are a few people that buck the trend, but again, this is general, this is a trend, right? If I have somebody who plays basketball, if I, if I said, oh yeah, I got a friend coming over, he plays basketball, I'm thinking he's probably gonna be a little tall, right? Is it possible that he's five foot four? Yes, all day freaking long. Makes it a lot easier to pass under somebody's legs if you're five foot four when everybody else is like six foot 11. It's like, oh wow, this is wide open. Um, okay, I don't know if you guys are with me or not. So again, some people think, when I say that, that means, for example, only tall people play basketball or something. Or I like to say, um, well, let's go that, we'll do that later. Let's do this one. Uh, <laughs> so there's a test in a class, 7 a.m. the next day, and a bunch of students go out, or an entire class, they went out to have test uh, drinks the night before, right? Um, yeah, I've never lived this. Uh, and then the next day they see what grade they made on their test. Uh, okay. So this means as the number of beers increased, what does it look like the test grades did? In fact, let me ask you, okay. This person right here, what's true about this person? Did they drink a lot relative to everybody else? Do you guys see that? They did not drink a lot. They're only here when every, most everybody is above that, yes? The number of beers is relatively low, but what about their grade? Low two, okay, good. This is an outlier. This is somebody. Are there people that could drink nothing the night before and fail the test? 
Yes, because the test does not only show if you're if you have a hangover or not, right? It shows what you know. If you don't know shit, I don't care how many beers you don't drink, you're still not going to do on the test. What about uh, this person? They drank relatively a lot, correct? But their grade was high, so maybe they're one of those special people that don't get hangovers or they can hold their alcohol or whatever. So if I take those away, what's the trend look like? As I drink more beer, what's it look like happens to the grades? Goes down. There's a general trend down. Okay. You with me? And this is just an example of what could happen. This could, and I'm not advocating for anybody to try this experiment out, in case my dean is watching, right? I'm not saying try this experiment. Uh, but can you see that happen? Right? If you don't get a good sleep the night before and all this kind of stuff, could you do worse on the test? Definitely. Now, what's this one showing? What's the difference between these? Is this also showing a downward trend? Which one of these two relationships is stronger? This one. You with me? Does everybody agree? Does that make sense? Why is this stronger? Why would you say that? I like what you just did. They're, they're much more in line. They are closer to the center line. See how I can draw a line right down the center? I can do the same thing here, but aren't those points much further away from that? That center line is kind of like the idea of an average, right? In fact, let me put it on there. Oh, uh, sorry guys. Who just came in and one of these? Anybody? Okay, Ryan. Okay, that's good. Um, if I draw a line right down the center, okay. would you say that line sort of averages out where the points are, roughly? It might not be perfect. You guys understand what I'm just now saying? Doesn't that line kind of represent the average of where the points are? Okay, and then I could do the same thing here. It's almost the same line. That's the trend line. That line, why is that line I just drew, why is it bad? Can anyone see why the line I just drew is, is not quite right? Where are most of the points? Most of the points are below. So this line should have actually been a little bit lower. Does that make sense? Can you guys, you guys understand what that, okay, okay. I like it, all right. So normally if I, there's gonna be a worksheet where you guys are gonna have to draw your own line and what I highly recommend is you do it in pencil because almost always you're gonna draw a line and go, oh shit, it should be lower again, and then erase it and do it again. You with me? I of course did this one in purple pen so I can't do anything about it. But, why is this one stronger than that one? Because the points line up much better. Which one has the points further away from the line on average? The first one, right? The purple line I drew is just like the average. In statistics, here we go. So if I have an average, what represents the average distance away from that to all the data points? Oh shit. What represents the average distance from the mean to all the data points? Standard deviation, kick ass. So the strength of a relationship is kind of related to the standard deviation. It is how spread out the points get. If it's really spread out, it's not that strong. This one is freaking weak as shit, yes? <laughs> it barely has this. I have to throw out the outliers to really see that. That one, strong as hell, it basically makes its own straight line. Is it perfect? Would you say that this is perfectly correlated? This is not perfectly correlated. What do you think perfectly correlated would mean? All the data points should be on the line, should themselves make a line? Is every data point on any line I could draw? No. 
If I draw one straight line, I can't possibly go through all the data points. But is it really close to being perfect? Oh, shit, yes. So we're going to have a way to figure out two things. Given any set of data, I want to figure out what the line is. And then I want to figure out the strength, which is related to how spread out the stuff is. So not surprised. This is kind of funny. This is the actual name of this thing. This line is called the line of best fit. It sounds like something I would make up, but that's the actual name. The line of best fit. Would you say that this is a negative or a positive correlation? Negative. negative why? It's going down. Going down. Slope is negative. This is a negative. So this is a strong negative correlation. This is a weak negative correlation. Which one, if it was true, which one would give better predictions? So let's say I am right here, right? I am right here. Can I predict what my grade will be? Which one would predict my grade better? Stronger. Which one could I trust more? The stronger one, yeah, okay. I like it. Now, there's one thing that's unfortunate about this class. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we're a small class. I don't know if you've seen that, right? Um, what I do every semester, and I haven't been able to do it for you guys because it's such a small damn sample, but I like to do a correlation between the number of homework somebody did and the grade they have. If it's a big enough class, the correlation is always pretty damn strong. Little points that represent people. As the number of homeworks increases, so does the grade. You guys kind of with me? And of course, that's freaking obvious as shit. If you, like I said earlier, if you do more homework, you should do better in general, right? And maybe, maybe. Okay. And they're all like, okay, dude, we can be So what about this one? This is now the hours that people study and the grade they make. Which one of these is more, probably more realistic to the real world? No. You definitely, in the real world, are going to get more variability. Right? I expect somebody to come tell me, I studied for 20 hours, I studied my ass off, and, and, and they still made a low grade, correct? In fact, that, that person studied like the second most, but they also made about the worst grade. Yes? That person right there? What do you think caused that? didn't understand it, maybe they don't study correctly, maybe there's, a, is studying the only variable that would affect the grade on your test? No, maybe that person, right, is uh, one of these people. Maybe they drank a lot. They studied their ass off, but they also drank a lot, I don't know, right? Or something else, they just didn't sleep well the night before, or they just blanked on the test or whatever, right? So the drawback, the one weakness of what we're about to get into is we can only study one variable versus one variable. We can only study two variables at a time. Are there more variables that would affect the grade you make on a test? Oh, hell yeah. Right. Okay. Some of you guys are like, yeah, how hard the teacher makes a damn test. That would affect people. All right, um, which one is stronger, of course? Yeah, the first one's stronger because it's tighter to the line. We try to draw a line. That's not bad. So it should visually average out where the points are. This one, how many outliers are in this one? What do you think? Can you identify one outlier? And what do you think an outlier means in this case? If I draw a line, an outlier would be something that is that is farther away from the line than any other points. So how many outliers do you guys see? Four. Okay, I can, I can see four. I see two for damn sure. 
right? The one we just talked about. This person supposedly studied a lot but still made a low grade. Who's this person? Who's that person right there? Studied so freaking little but made a really relatively high grade, right? You guys with me? Have you ever sat next to this person that didn't have to open their book at all and they just made nothing but A's? And of course, you gotta remember, that person might be taking the class for the third time, so. Keep that in mind. Anytime you're in class, you're like, how much shit are you doing that? They might have seen this shit twice already, so. You guys with me so far? This doesn't seem so bad so far, I would hope. Okay. I know right now, if I were a student here, I was like, what the shit's my work gonna look like? What am I gonna do with this? Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's not gonna be that bad. So, like I said earlier, there's two things. I wanna know the equation of the line of best fit. That's one thing we wanna know. The second thing I wanna know is, can we have a number that represents the strength? I want one number that represents the strength. So that number should be higher for this guy and lower for this guy because that guy's weaker, yes? So I just need two things. I need to calculate the equation of the line of best fit and I need to uh, calculate the strength number. And this number that represents the strength, we call it the correlation coefficient or the Pearson product. I'm going to say correlation coefficient more often. I don't like Pearson product. And we use the letter R for that number. So here's the idea. R captures the strength. Here's what makes a ton of sense. If there's no trend, if I, if I just have dots that are like all over the damn place, if I just have a graph that looks like this, like draw a line that represents the trend. What would you say to me if I said draw a line that represents the trend? You would look at me and say what? Ain't no way I can do that, Jim. Right? Or you'll say whatever you would say. Hopefully something more respectful, but it's up to you. Right? If I asked me to do this, I'm like, Jeff, what the hell's wrong with you, man? So that that right there, it makes complete sense that R is zero or close to it, right? Zero means no correlation. Okay, I like it, that makes sense. Uh, R equals zero means there's absolutely no correlation. They're just all over the freaking place. I like it. Here's another situation where R is zero, Are you ready? This one's a little less obvious. Doesn't that, don't they line up? Right? Don't they line up? Should there be a correlation between how high I jump and how tall the tree is that's right over there? Should there be a correlation between how high I jump and how tall the tree is? If I, if I just jump a little bit, does the height of the tree over there change? I love it. You guys are like, what are you talking about, man? So the height of the tree stays the same, even if I jump a little bit or if I jump a lot, the height of the freaking tree doesn't give a shit, right? So to be truly correlated, as one variable changes, the other variable has to change in a predictable manner. Does this variable change at all? No, so there's no correlation there either. You guys get that? So there's gotta be some kind of a diagonal line because that would, a diagonal line would mean as this one increases, so does this one, that would be a correlation. If one of the two doesn't give a shit about the other dude, it's just gonna stay flat that way or this way. So there would be no correlation then. They don't care about each other. Okay. So negative one. So if I get an R of negative one, that means perfect negative correlation. That would be something like where they just all perfectly line up on a line. I think my dots big so they actually line up. Perfect negative correlation that's R equals negative one. Would this have an R equal to negative one right here, this guy? 
Nope. If I had to take a guess, I'd say negative 0.9 something. I really want this to make immediate conceptual sense. Are, they, are, are the dots perfectly lined up? Perfectly. Oh, hell no. Are they really damn close to being perfectly lined up? Yes. So my R should be close to like negative 1. It should be negative 0.96 or something. Do you guys get a feel for that? The more spread out it gets, the closer to 0 it should get. So this guy, this guy, I don't know. I would say r equals negative 0.3 or something. There is a negative correlation, but is it strong? Is it close to a perfect? Hell no, that shit's all over the damn place, right? OK, maybe. All right, so let me show you this. Here's the formula for r. We are not going to use this formula. You guys hear me? Here's the formula for R. Now, real quick, what did I just say? We're, we're not going to use this, correct? I am not going to make you use this formula. Focus. Does anything look at all familiar, though? Real quick, we're, we're just going to look at it. We're not going to do it. We're just going to look at it. Does anything look familiar in there at all? Sigma. Sigma. Right, so this is the sum of x times y. So we're going to have two variables, right, like number of beers and grades. This is x times y, and then I add them up. This is add up the x's, add up the y's, blah, blah, blah. Right? These things on the bottom are related to the standard deviation of x, the standard deviation of y. Why does it make sense that standard deviation stuff would show up in this equation? Because r is kind of like a measure of how spread out the data points are. The more spread out they are, the lower R gets. Maybe. I'm not saying right now you should totally understand this equation, but you see part, you know what N is. It's the number of things, right? You know what this means. You know what X and Y are. It's just this big, crazy ass equation. Okay. Let me see if I got the. I don't think they give it to me quickly, do they? Well, going to show you the equation and the line of best fit, but they don't have it right there. Okay, okay. So, so, I think what I want to do first, yeah, what I want to do first, uh, I think we will do this first. Okay. So if you look on the back, what I've done for you, this is from the um, calculator Bible, the calculator guide that's up in Canvas. That's exactly all the steps you need be able to do this in your calculator. If you don't have a calculator, let's go ahead and give you one. Does anyone need one? Yep. here, right here. What does this entry here mean? What does that mean? One beer, so. Somebody drank one beer and made an 86 on the test, right? Okay, so go ahead and put the beers in list one and the grades in list two.
Do you think I should sort list two? Do you think that would be a good idea? Why would sorting either list be crazy? Yeah, if I sort list two, does a row represent a person anymore if I sort these? This one has to go with his 97. This 2.3 has to go with his 90. By the way, that's somebody drank a third of a beer. I guess this guy drank the rest of it. I don't know. Okay, you guys, does it make sense? Never sort any of this because the point means a person. If you sort it, you should like cut that person in half and that's generally frowned upon in society. Okay. So what I want to do first is just plot these points. So here we go. You see up here above y equals it says staff plot. That sounds encouraging. So I'm going to hit second y equals. Okay, real quick, do you guys all see this screen here on your own calculator? Yeah. Does any of those say on your plots? Everybody's good? Everybody says off? Yes. Okay. So let's go into plot one. So hit enter for plot one. Now let's turn it on first off, right? Just hit hover over on and hit enter. There, that's what I want. To, I want to make a scatter plot. Notice, by the way, that if you would have looked at the manual, you could have seen how to make histograms and box plots. And then here, let's say our list one is our x's, list two is y's, right? So everybody got that in there? Uh, then you get to choose. You got a little marker for your data points. Do you want to put a little square on your data points, a plus, a big dot, a small speck in the universe? I am obviously a square, obviously. And then for me, I could pick color. I don't know for the rest of you guys. I just make it blue, that's fine. Okay, so has everybody got all that? So if you hit graph right now, it's, it's oops, I actually still have stuff in here. Get rid of that. Go to Y equals and make sure this is all clear. By the way, don't freak out. I know yours looks different from mine. Hold on. Make sure that Y equals is clear. And if you hit graph, it doesn't show many freaking data points. What the shit? So of course it doesn't. So we haven't used the graphing calculator much. I don't know if all of you guys have ever used it to graph anything, but when I first open it up, it should come up negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Does anyone's look different than that? You guys all have that showing up when you hit the graph button? You guys all with me? Okay. So here's what you gotta do. The calculator doesn't know what you want from it. It's just gonna graph negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. We have to go tell it, hey calculator, find my freaking data. So the way we do that is, if you hit zoom, now which one of those do you think is what I want right now? Nine. Yes, nine is zoom stat. If you do that, it'll find your data points. Let me know if you're not able to get that. By the way, uh, on the final exam, there will be a problem with this, and you have to come up and show me your calculator with the picture of this, and we're gonna get the line to show up in there in a minute. Okay. All right, all right. So. So everybody's got that. And by the way, I tried to make it look like this first set of data. I think I did okay. I could have done a little better, but it's pretty close. That's pretty close. Okay. Now, what are the two things I want to calculate about this data? What are the two things we want to know? Say again. Okay, good. The, the R, the strength of the correlation. Somebody else, what's the other thing I want? So I want to know how strong the relationship is. What's the other thing I want that we did earlier? I drew it in. The line of best fit, kick ass. So we're going to make this calculator tell us this shit because we don't like the looks of that equation. We're going to make the calculator tell us this. So here's how we do that. So everybody hit stack. And it kind of makes sense. What do we want to do right now? I want to make the calculator calculate something for us. So I'm going to go over to calc. 
And which one of those looks like it's going to give me the equation of a line? There's actually two, which I don't understand why, but which, which one looks like it's going to give me the equation of a line? What is the equation of a line? You guys remember? Y equals mx plus b. So this calculator doesn't use the letter m. It uses the letter a, right? Because it's stats, not algebra. So it wants to be different, right? So everybody selects. Do you see how there's this one down here, too? Poor little dude. Screw him. We're going to use number four. They're all both the same. So everybody hit number four. Make sure you're telling it's list one. Make sure it's list two for the Y list, right? And by the way, if you have an older calculator and it just says uh, Lin Reg, just hit enter. It defaults to list one and list two. If you get this one, make sure it's list one, list two. Go down and hit calculate. Okay. Let me do that again. Make sure. I'm hoping some of you guys have more information than I do. Stat, calc, number four, list one, list two, calculate. Did anyone get more information than I did? Does everybody have only these things showing up? Oh, you got more information? Oh man, you're so cool. So I'm gonna make sure the rest of us get the other information. Because what did we want? We wanted the line of best fit. Do you guys see that's it? What's the slope of the line? What's the slope of the line of S fit? What's the slope? Negative. Okay, negative 2.53, blah, 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 right? Mx plus b, m is the slope, b is the what? Mx plus b, anybody remember what b meant? Y-intercept. Real quick, real quick. Ain't no way I can teach math and not make sure everybody knows this shit. Um, So if I have y equals 2x minus 5, right? Real quick. Um, let's make a few points. 0, what's y? If x is 0, what's y? Negative 5. If x is 1, what's y? Negative 3. If x is 2, what's y? Negative 1. When x changes by 1, how much does y change? 2. Slope. 2 over 1. Y's change by 2 as the X changes by 1. Rise over run. Correct? Where would this thing hit the X axis? Or the, I'm sorry, the Y axis? How do I graph this point here? So move 0 left and right, move down 5. Move 1, down 3. Move two, down one, right? So there's the up two over one, up two over one thing. But there's the y-intercept. Of course that's the y-intercept because when I make x zero, I'm going to get that. I don't care what I put there. So if I have y equals mx plus b, what do I get when I make x zero? I get b. So b is the y-intercept, m is the slope. OK, so coming back to this. Leslie, real quick, what is it you have showing up that we don't? Um, oh, yeah, cool. So you actually got the R. So we get the line of S fit, but I'm missing the freaking R. We need the R also. I wonder how strong this correlation is. All right, you're ready, everybody. <laughs> we only have to do this once if you have your own calculator. Um, if one test day, if you want to come up and say, hey, man, can you set up my calculator? I'll do it real quick. But for right now, just everybody do this with me, um, except for us. You're good back there. Here's a crazy ass button. You ready? Hit second, zero. It says catalog. And it comes up with every function this calculator can do. What do you think that very first one is? Absolute value. Okay, yeah. So what we want to do is I want to go to the D part of this. So hit that button right there, see what has the D above it. So hit bam. So now you should be in the, what's very interesting, and actually can calculate the day of the week. 
you give it like a year, I think, and a, and a, and a uh, like April 17th, 1942, it'll tell you what day of the week that was. But I want to scroll down to something that's called diagnostic on. You only have to do this once if you have your own calculator. Does everybody see that? So then if you go down to it, hit enter, enter. So now if we go back to stat, calc number four, it will give me everything. So remember what we said about this, this, um, this distribution. Did we think that this was a strong one? No, in fact, I kind of gave away negative 0.3 is what I thought it would be. And it came out to be negative 0.34. It's pretty weak, but it is negative. You guys see that? The closer R is to one or negative one, the stronger the correlation is. The sign just means is it positive or negative, right? So negative 0.3 is pretty damn weak. There is a trend, but it's really, the points are just sort of like really all over the place. So help me out, help me out. Um, what is the, let's write this down. Can you write down real quick what the line of best fit is? Where did I put that? I didn't put that in. There it is. What we get. We got R, I'm sorry, we're up here. We got R of negative 0.34 roughly. Is this strong? No. What kind of correlation? Weak? Negative. The line of best fit is Y equals negative 2.535X plus 89.839. So I just got that right off of here. So now if you hit y equals real quick, you hit y equals in your calculator, we can put that equation in. Negative, negative down here, negative. 2.535. X. X is right here. This is your all-purpose variable button. There's X plus 89.831. So if you put that equation in and then hit graph, you'll get this. There's the line of best fit. So what was X? Oh, X is right there. This button is your all-purpose variable button. So, I mean, that does capture what it looks like the points are doing, correct? But, but my God, the points are basically all over. That's why it was so weak. But there definitely is a trend down, but it's pretty damn weak. That's probably closer to real life. Because there are other variables that will affect somebody's grade, not just the number of years you have. If that was the only variable that would affect your grade, then... It would be very different. Okay. So this is what you would come up and show me on the day of the final. You would show me this picture. Question. Yes. I'm so on the I like the Oh hey, graph. Graph, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sweet. So I'm assuming everybody is fooled, everybody got this to show up. So please take a moment now and do everything we just did. Do it for this set of data here. Go to your list, highlight list one, hit clear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everything should be clear. Yeah. Let's see. So go to Y equals. Yeah, and now you can put it in. So there's a negative, and there's your X button right there. Yeah. So now just type that in.
By the way, one trick, if, as I'm putting in list two, every now and again make sure that the number you just put in goes with the right number in list one, because it really sucks if you get to the bottom list and you're missing one or something. Data entry universally just sucks. So you know you're on the right track. Well, actually, did anyone get the R yet? Anybody get the R? What'd you get? No, point seven four. Yeah. Seven four roughly. So if you get R as point seven four, you're on the right track. If you don't, it normally means you typed in something wrong. On a test or something, I'm going to be very forgiving if you type in something wrong. If you come up to show me your graph and I can see there's something wrong, I'll try to point out to you um, where some data went wrong. Because data entry sucks. It's more boring than my normal part, is the data entry. So. What do you guys think? Is um, 0.74 a strong correlation? What do you think? Is that strong? Is it perfect? 0.74, is that perfect? No, it should be one if it was perfect, right? Do you think it's strong, 0.74? It's definitely stronger than the one we just got. So that one's decently strong. At the moment, okay, we're, we're gonna have a way. I'm gonna give you a benchmark number on the test. I'll say R has to be greater than something to show correlation. So you'll know what shows correlation. But the closer the R is to one, the stronger it is. I'm not gonna give you an R that you have to go, yeah, it's sorta of strong, you're not sure what adjective to use. So I'll try to give you an R that's really obviously weak or strong. So how's everybody doing? Everybody get that R value? This is what I got. So then I got as a Y, so is this strong? Sort of, it's not weak. What kind of correlation is it? It's like a decently strong positive, because R is positive, correlation. The line of best fit is 0.657x plus 70.967. So make sure, if I just hit graph right now, I get this. Does anyone else get that? We just hit graph right now. Oh, did you do um, Zoom stack? You did, I didn't. Oh, okay. So remember, whenever you put brand new data in, you should hit zoom stat. But I also haven't changed my y equals. So let's do those two things. I gotta change my y equals. I gotta put in the actual equation. 0.657x plus 70.967. And then I have to hit zoom number nine, the stat. So you should end up with this picture here. Again, nowhere near perfect, but definitely stronger. You can see it's much stronger than the first one we did. 
They all do line up. Okay. So again, that would be what you would come up and show me on the day of the final. Yeah. And on the, uh, well, let's see. Trying to figure out when would be a great time to have our last quiz, and I think a week from today would be perfect. Um, and then, then Thursday is going to be the day of the practice final, uh, the review for the final. So on, uh, I'll give you a practice final. So that Thursday, the last Thursday class, will be review for the final. I'll have the answer key for the practice final, just like a normal test. Um, yeah. So we'll have a quiz on this. Chapter 10 stuff a week from today. So let me ask you this question. Um, which one of these two situations that we've done would you trust the line of best fit to make a prediction? Which one of these two would you trust more to make a good prediction? Which one was the stronger correlation? This one. So I'm going to trust this equation more. What do I mean by prediction, by the way? What the hell, Jeff? Well, what if I studied 11 hours and I want to predict what my grade is going to be? How would I do that? Which variable, x or y? Which variable is this? It's x. And this is y. So I'm saying, what if x is 11? Do I have a way to predict what y will be? Yeah, totally, right there. y equals that. So I just put an 11 right there. And so I'll try that out. So if I want to know, what if I studied 11 hours? Can I predict what grade I would make? So I would just have to put 0.657 times 11 plus 70.967. I would predict that I would make a 78. That would be my prediction. My prediction is a three. How confident am I in that prediction? Eh, eh. A lot more confident than I would be for this, but still, when would I be really, really confident? If this was freaking one, the closer this is to one, the more I can trust the prediction that that gives me. Hmm. All right, so what I want to do um, right now is to give you something uh, a little more concrete to work on related to this, obviously. What's going to really be exciting for you? So let's do this first. Um, there's going to be some algebra involved. So let's do an example problem real quick, so we all remember how this algebra part works. Um, you guys remember this kind of a problem where they gave you two points? So it says find the equation of the line that goes through um, 1, negative 4, and um, 5, 8. Does that sound familiar to anybody? One person, okay. What two things do I need to be able to calculate the, lot, the equation of the line? Oh, so I need the slope. One thing I need is the slope. Y2 minus Y1 over? Uh, X2 minus Y2. Okay. And what's the second thing I need? You need X or the Y2. All right, some kind of point. It might be the y-intercept. I need the point. Did I give you the y-intercept? because I'm a math teacher and we're jerks. So I didn't give you the line or set, but I did give you two points to choose from. 
So doesn't it make sense if somebody gave me a point somewhere, there's a point, and they told me where to go from there, then I can get the whole line. I can get the whole line. So of course the equation needs exactly what I need visually. I need a point and I need the slope. I need a place to start and I need a direction to go. So the slope, pretty straightforward. You guys remember how to do this? Y2 minus Y1. You could take the, the y from this one minus the y from that one over x2 minus x1. So the x from this one minus the x from that one. And what do I get? I get. No, I'm not multiplying, subtracting. Minus the negative becomes a plus 4 is 5 minus 1 is. So I get 3. So my slope is 3. Now I need a point, you got two, pick one. Which point do you want to use? Huh? Five eight? Okay, so let's see if you guys remember this equation. All right, even if you don't, it's pretty straightforward. It's y minus the y piece equals m times x minus the x piece. So y equals 3x minus 15 plus 8. So y is 3x minus 7. So 3x minus 7 goes through both of those two points. Let's check it real quick. If I put a 1 in, what's 3 times 1 minus 7? What's 3 minus 7? What's 3 minus 7? Negative four. See, so it works. Okay, so you need to know this to be able to do what I asked you to on this here, which I put somewhere. Okay. So when I give this to you, don't do anything yet. I want to show you something to make sure we all start off in the right place. Now, each of you are almost definitely going to get different answers for this, which is completely fine because we're doing this by hand. So here's the idea. Oh, did I bring a pencil? I think so. Did it work? Yes. What you really want to do is to get a straight edge or just use another sheet of paper. You want to very lightly try to draw in a line of S fit. Almost invariably, oh, come on, Jeff, that's not bad. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to make one. I'm going to keep that one. Why does that look, well, all right, what's one thing that's kind of wrong about that line? Can you guys, where's there more points? Below. So it should be kind of either tilted or brought down. Do you understand the idea? I'm trying to average out where the points are. So there should be roughly equal amounts of points, and they should be about... Uh, averaging out the distances. So let me try again. So draw that first one really light. And try again. So I want to be a little bit tilted, a little bit down. Now let's see if that one's better. Probably gonna draw pretty bad. Let's see what happens. Check. I lost it in the middle. That one looks okay. Shit. Yeah, that one's okay. I can live with that one. That one's not bad. So everybody's is going to be a little bit different. I think I went a little too far down, but it's okay. I'm going to keep that one. So we're doing this by hand. So it's not going to be perfect. But do you understand what, what you're trying to do visually here? Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, if I'm lucky enough that I actually go through a point, and I'm going to say I pretty much go through that point. I'm pretty close. But I don't go through any other points there, do I? I need to pick two points my line goes through so I can do that. I want to figure out what the equation of that line is. So let's see. I would use, yeah, look, I go through, be very careful here. Do you see how that's one? I didn't do this on purpose, but I'm sorry. So that's one 
I can use 120, I mean, sorry, 20 comma 1, and I can use 7 comma 15. So that's my two points. Nobody else uses my points. Those are my points. Use your own points. So does everybody understand? You've got to find two points that the line you just drew goes through. Okay. So I, my points, should not be the same as yours necessarily. I am going to do my work so that you can see it. Now, so everybody else, you get your own two points, and then you do exactly what we did up on the board. Find the slope, do all that kind of business. Oh, my slope is going to suck. Too bad. Later, if you need to help with um, combining some stuff. Oh, let's see. Your slope should definitely be negative, correct? If your slope is not negative, you made a mistake. This is definitely going down. Does everybody need help? Did it, was everybody able to find a couple points that your line goes through? It's okay if it doesn't go through a data point. You just try to use, you try to see if it hits perfectly somewhere. Right. Or at least close enough. This is by hand, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, don't freak out about fractions and decimals. You can use your calculator to help out. Is anyone willing to share what they got for their slope? Perfectly negative one. Oh, that's a lucky one. Anybody else got a different slope than negative one? I didn't get negative one. Oh, negative four fifths. Okay, so negative point eight. Okay, I've got you. Okay. Anybody else? Different slope. No, like that's my own personal information. That's my hippo. 
You don't get to know that, Jeff. All right. Um, so I got this. And I picked those two points, which led to this beautiful slope. Negative 14 thirteenths. Being a math geek, I did it all in fractions. But I got negative 1.8 as a slope and 22.54 as a y-intercept. So is this right? No, I'll guarantee you that's not right. So if you didn't get that, you're completely fine. Because I did it by hand. Holy shit. Calculator can do it perfectly. That's what it's built for, right? But you should have gotten something around negative 1 for a slope, and you should get something around 20 for a y-intercept. Okay. So if you got around that, beautiful. So let's do this. In the interest of time, I have, so number four, I, uh, number four, part D, I, I want you to do what we did earlier, putting the data into the lists. But I went ahead and compiled for you what the points are. So there's 221, right? And then blah, blah, blah. So I went in and did that. So if everybody could please just take a minute and put those numbers into list one. Holy shit, Jeff. Put those numbers into, come on, there, into list one and list two, right? Put the x's into list one, that's the number of, um, that's the hour study, and y is the number of mistakes made, right? Make sure to clear these lists clear. Never hit delete on a list. That'll actually make the list go away. Go ahead and try to do the, um, if the line of best fit. By the way, when you do this, this lin reg stands for linear regression. It's kind of a technical term for the points tend to regress towards the line. Take a large enough sample. Um, not as important, the name of it. My slope is way too big, too big negative, right? And then this white is supposed to be about 20.5, yeah. But by hand, I got pretty close. So if you got something like negative 0.9 or negative 0.8, that you got closer to the slope. Um, but as long as it's somewhere around that, again, we're doing it by hand. What do you guys think about the R value? What does that tell you? Two things. This R value, what does it tell you? It's pretty strong. Pretty strong, it's really pretty strong. It's, it's really close to, to one, right? And then what does the negative sign tell you? That it's a <laughs> negative correlation, yeah. And that we can tell from the picture, going down over time, right? So hopefully the number of hours you study would make you have less mistakes. Okay. Um, okay. By the way, really, watch, 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 I want to show you something. Then here's something you wish you knew before I go too far, any questions on this here? Is that all right? So again, the slope we got by hand is not going to be perfect, but it's, it's relatively close to that. Okay. Watch this. Here's something you wish you knew back in the day. I'm going to clear these lists. You don't have to do this with me if you don't want to. Those two points we did up there, one, five, so one, negative four, five, eight. If I do linear regression on that, I get 3x minus 7, yes? Any two points, why does it make sense that r is 1? If I just have two data points, why is r always going to be 1? Always. 
two data points. Is it possible for the line that they make for one of them to not be on that line? Don't two points make a line themselves? If you, if you just put two points down anywhere, the line you draw through them, of course it'll contain both. Don't you need a third point to not be on the line possibly? You guys follow? Any two points, any two points you draw anywhere, make a line. I need a third point so that it won't be on the line, yes? Okay, so that's why any two data points, if you use just two, R should be one. Because they of course they make a perfectly straight line. Okay. Um here, let me see. That's not it. No, they don't show it to me. Too bad. No. Here we go. I just want to show this to you real quick. Uh, here's part of it. Here's the formula for the y-intercept. And the formula for the slope, oh, here it is, down here, but it's a little bit weird. Okay. So the formulas in this section are a bit daunting, and that's one reason why I don't make us use the formulas. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Was this correlation strong or weak? I got negative 0.94 for R. Was it strong or weak? Strong. If you study more, will you definitely make less mistakes? Somebody is like, does he want the teacher? If you study more, are you guaranteed to make less mistakes? Shit, no. So if I find a correlation between two things, that does not mean one thing affects the other one. This does, correlation does not show causation. It doesn't tell me that this actually makes this change. It just says these two are correlated somehow. That's all it says. I don't know which one causes the other one. That would be a different statistical test. But this would be like an, uh, an initial thing I would do. I'd just see, okay, what two variables seem the strongest correlated? And then I'll do a test of causation. That's where you start to give experimental stuff to people and see what causes something else to happen, right? Okay. I think we haven't had an early day in a while, so we're going to have an early day today. Um, so again, a week from today, we're going to have a quiz on this stuff. On Thursday, we're going to do more of this stuff. There's a few other things that we have to do that's some little detailed stuff. Um, yeah. And Thursday I'll have the, well, let's see, either Thursday or Tuesday I'll have the practice final to give to you guys. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you.